Thank you for joining me today. You are listening and watching Stress-Free Aging with Amanda Allen. And today we are talking about insurance choices for long-term care. And I want to welcome my guest, Dan Tripp. Thank you for being a guest here today. Thank you for asking. Um, I know that you have many years of experience in this in this manner, so you are the best choice to address these questions that I have for you today. So um, we're going to get right into the question. So the first question that I have for, t for you is long-term care. What are some of the major benefits of having uh, long-term care insurance? Well, if I think the biggest benefit is the fact that it is bought with discounted dollars and it helps pay for any medical care that perhaps Medicare won't pick up. Okay. And because of that, it really allows someone to protect their assets against a quick erosion from the cost of long-term care. Okay, so let's um, have an example because a lot of people may not know what we're talking about when we address the long-term care insurance. So if someone is going to, let's say they no longer can stay safe in their home and they need an assisted living, can you use long-term care insurance for that? Yes, in fact, it was originally designed to cover nursing home care. Okay. Uh, it pays out a monthly benefit. Um, it may cover all of the need. Mm -hmm. It may not. It may cover only a portion. It depends on how the product is, how the, how the policy is actually structured. Okay. Um, because you know that I do placement, and you do, I, I know that I do senior placement, and I had a placement not too long ago. And that's, uh, it was the easiest placement that I had. I believe it was like $4,500 a month is, is what the rent would be for this place that this, uh, that this um, woman that had, had gone into. And it was all covered under her long-term care insurance. Is that, is that common? Very common. In fact, uh, today if we do our job as agents, we're making sure that uh, people who do need the coverage have as much as they can afford and uh, we can't you know we can't predict what it will be but we do have inflation fighting options in place we can keep the policy active and growing throughout the life of the policy okay um my next question to you what are the uh, what are my options when it comes to long-term care insurance oh okay so. um there's actually three or four okay uh the first and the one that I lean toward the most is what we just call a traditional long-term care okay. policy. It's standalone insurance. It covers your monthly uh, need. It can have inflation fixed into it. Um, if you're a if you're a couple, you can actually have a shared care benefit where. If one person exhausts their bucket of money, the other person's bucket becomes available to them. Um, it's the least expensive way of doing long-term care insurance. Really? Okay. Uh, it doesn't, I know a lot of people seem to think that it's very expensive, but when you figure that a couple things to keep in mind are, one, the average cost in Michigan for assisted living is around $4,200 a month. and uh, do you want to write a check for four thousand two hundred dollars a month, or would you be better off writing a check? Do you have that in savings anyway? <laughs> you know, to, well, and true. how long will a savings like that last? Well, if you're, you know, at fifty grand a year, it doesn't take long to exhaust a savings account. Mm -hmm. And if you could do that with two hundred dollars a month, or two hundred fifty dollars a month, doesn't it make more sense to use the leverage and power of your money? Absolutely, and then. Um, life insurance. Uh, can I use my life insurance policy to pay for care, and how does that work? Well, you can. Uh, most traditional life insurance policies, if they're whole life policies, will have, even term insurance now, has what they call an accelerated death benefit. Okay. And that simply kicks in in the event that 
you've been determined that uh, you have 12 or less months to live. Okay. And you can use the death benefit for your care, or you can use the death benefit for whatever you want. Maybe you want to take that last cruise. It doesn't matter. You can accelerate the death benefit under those circumstances. Okay. An accelerated benefit, is that like 80 how much is an accelerated benefit? Typically Does it 70 to 75 percent. Okay. Because and you want some death benefit left over. Right. Um, and if you have, if someone has been hospice, made ho deemed hospice, how, what is the process to try to get that benefit? All you need is the doctor's uh, report that, okay. that death is imminent. Okay. And that will start the process. Now, there's all life insurance has that, but there are some other methods of using a life insurance policy to guarantee that you have not only a full death benefit, but also a very nice long-term care benefit if you, the need arises. And it's called asset care or asset-based okay. care. Okay. And how that works is it's typically a single premium policy. So minimum is usually $50,000 you know, $100,000, that's for people who have money lying around okay. that don't really know what to do with it. You buy a life insurance policy with that money. Okay. And it would, it, it say age 65, 50,000 would probably buy about a $110,000 death benefit. Okay. But it would also provide probably a $180,000 account to use for long-term care. It's not real money unless you have to tap it. So right. it's something you can use while you're okay. It's only used if you're sick and you need the assistance. Okay. But it's it's there. You can exhaust that. Typically, is a lifetime bucket of money. Okay. Because once it's gone, they just keep paying. Okay. When you die, the death benefit is paid to your beneficiaries. So okay. that, that's one method of of doing it with a life insurance. And that's policy. called the accelerated death benefit. No, that's an asset based. Asset policy. based. Okay. And then there's a hybrid. Okay. Which is a life insurance policy with a long-term care rider attached to it. Okay. It, typically, that's going to be a 2% of the death benefit use. Okay. So if you have a $200,000 death benefit, you're going to get $4,000 a month for 50 months. Oh, wow. At the end of that time frame, if, you know, if you're still alive and you're still receiving care, the policy usually has a 10% residual death benefit. So in this case, it would be $20,000 at death, but there's no more long-term care benefit that can come out of that policy. Okay. It also doesn't include any inflation fighting. So if you bought it at 50 and didn't use it till 75, there's you, the cost of money has eroded quite a ways. By then, that's just something to keep in mind okay. if that's an option. So let's do an example. I'm a 50 year old female that's fairly healthy i take no medications give me an example of getting possibly like long-term care what is it is it going to be a 500 dollars a month payment for me to do something at 50. it could be but you'd be buying an awful lot of coverage okay for that kind of price okay typically what i would do is at, at 50 knowing you're in good health you're not going to need a huge bucket of money today mm -hmm. so I would look at a three to four thousand dollar monthly benefit for, okay. for three or four years typically I do three okay so that would be a you'd have a bucket of hundred and forty four thousand dollars to use for long-term care okay okay uh, I'm gonna put at age 50 I'm gonna put at least a three and a half to three and three quarters percent inflation okay on that so that it will double in 17 years or so. Okay. So that three grand or four grand a month becomes eight grand okay. a month. The nice thing is your premium does not go up. Oh, your premium that. doesn't, okay. So you're actually buying more and more with less and less if you look at it from that perspective. Okay, and and I might throw a curveball with this one, but is what would be a, an approximate amount that I would pay for something like that? Um, age 50, you're probably, because you're female, you get the short end of the stick for long-term care right. because you're going to live longer, Right. so they're going to make you pay more. Okay. Uh, it's probably going to be in the neighborhood of 
maybe 210 to 225 dollars a month which really that that's pretty reasonable if you're if you're thinking of trying to provide that care at the end and well, if, you, if, pretty... you, if you look at the balancing act there you've got right. let's say you've got 225 or you've got 4000 right what's what's easier to write the check for right exactly so in in doing that like a whole life that is would you be able to do a policy that's a whole life that's that's accelerated with that or is that going to be a different price well uh, because you're having with with the acceler with the asset based that uses a whole life insurance policy okay okay so you're going to pay premium for that at age 50 you want a decent if you're going to put 50,000 in so the nice thing about asset base is it's not premium based it's whatever you can afford to put into it but let's say you wanted to spread those payments out mm -hmm. you can do it for 10 years Really? They'll let you spread those fifty thousand dollars out over five thousand a year for okay. ten years. Okay. Okay. It's still going to buy the same amount of insurance. Okay. It's still going to give you the same long-term care bucket. It's just maybe a little easier for you to to do it that okay. way. Okay. Um, do you have anything that you would like to just let us know about insurance and the importance of of planning now? I, I think. If you look at what where we're headed as a demographic, mm -hmm. um, the U.S. Census Bureau has said that by 2030, um, there'll be 20% of our population will be over 65 years of age, mm. and by 2035 or 40, they expect that there will be more over age 65 than under age 18. So mm. that traditional thing where we used to always have family come in and care for us, the family unit is shrinking, and it's also spreading out across the country. They're going where the opportunities are. Well, years ago, people were having seven, eight kids at <laughs> that time. That's now, true. That's Now, two, three. Well, you know. and because we are aging as a society, it, it means that there are more and more of us who need care. Mm -hmm. um, and following COVID, it's been that uh, there's been a lack of, of caregivers. You know, there's it nurses sure and people aren't going into, the, into those jobs right now because mm -hmm. of their, you know, the, his, the uh, history of COVID has made it problematic for them. So when you have an insurance policy, the one thing you can guarantee yourself of is that you're going to receive care right. in a facility if you need to, at home if you need to, uh, if you're if, even an adult daycare, you can feel comfortable in that you're so going you to have... So you can use those dollars for adult daycare as well? That's correct. Okay. Um, and let's talk about those dollars and the way that it's specified. So. A long-term care situation in a nursing home in an assisted living would it also cover uh, just independent or not the reason it does not cover independent living is because of the claims triggers that have to be in place okay. uh, a policy needs to have two activities of daily living required so for those of you that don't know what activities daily living feeding bathing laundry Transference, Cooking, things like that, bathing, right. toileting, toileting continents, like, okay. those kinds. Of, those those are the six ADLs they call me. Right. Activities of daily living, or there has to be a uh, cognitive issue. Okay. If the if there's any dementia that's being shown, then that would be a trigger. That'd be a trigger. Okay. So independent living are people who can live by themselves and don't need any help, and that's why so it doesn't cover that. If somebody started in, in independent and they were in an aged in place where they could transfer or they started to decline, then of course this could kick in. As soon as those triggers are met, the doctor Absolutely. signs off. Okay. Uh, claims process is pretty straightforward. And, and then just to reiterate, these are services that can be used for home. If you wanted to be able to age at home and have caregivers come in the home, correct? And it's, it's, that's what I think makes the insurance so valuable to most people is because uh, AARP, for instance, has said that 90% of their membership has indicated that they would prefer to stay in their home. 
Okay. And if we can help people stay in their home where it, their comfort is better, the familiarity is better, the family can come and visit at any time, uh, those are kinds of things that people want. And if we can help pay for the care while they stay at home, then it just makes more sense to do it that way. Okay. Um, one question that I have is, can someone use the VA aid and attendant benefits with long-term care? You know, um, I'm going to have to defer out on that okay. because I don't do <laughs> well, any we'll work We'll talk to one of our, our VA partners when we have them on the show, and we'll address that issue then. Y yes, because okay. I, I would prefer not to comment on something that I've that never you, worked with. Okay. Yeah. That's why I just, you know, these are things that are popping up more and more. Um, the show is to educate people. Um, do you have any, um, what about starting life insurance when you're in your 20s or 30s? You know what you do? Even long-term care at early ages. Mm -hmm. When you think about how fragile is our health, mm -hmm. if you can get a good life insurance policy at an early age for the least amount of money possible because you are in good health, it makes so much more sense than to wait until the need arises. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of pages of conditions in insurance that will keep people from getting good rates. And it's a laundry list that it goes from A to Z. And with long-term care, I know a lot of people say, well, well I don't need that now. I'm, I'm 35, I'm 40, I'm 45. I, I'm not going to use it for years and years. And for them, I would have, I would just remind them of one thing, MS. Because MS strikes people in their late 20s, early 30s a lot of times. Once it's struck, you might still be very much active mm -hmm. and it really doesn't impact your lifestyle very much. But mm -hmm. in the eyes of the insurance company, you're ineligible now. You can't get it at all. Wow. So if someone has a family history of that, that's something to kind of... I think if there's a family history of Alzheimer's uh -huh. or uh, vascular dementia okay. or uh, Parkinson's, uh, heart disease... Um, those are things that you can protect against okay. in advance. Okay. So the planning process is, I, I tell people all the time, if you wait till later, it's almost always going to be too late. That's true. That's true. You're just not going to be able to get it. Or if you do become eligible for it, it's, you're going to be rated so that you're paying a real high premium okay. to get what you could have had earlier. Okay. You know, well, I've learned a lot here on this show today. How can somebody get a hold of you if they're interested in purchasing or having a conversation with you in regards to long-term care insurance? Well, I would, besides the purchasing, I also would like to just let everybody know that one of the services that I provide, and it's not a, I don't charge for it, is if you or a family member does have a long-term care policy, and you don't really know what it says mm -hmm. because they bought it back in 2000 and they don't know what it covers anymore. I'll sit down with the family okay. and go over the policy specifics with them and let them know exactly what they can expect and how to file a claim. Okay. Um, and getting in touch with me, uh, my phone number is 313-478-4337. Um, Do you, you have an email? I have an email. It's uh, dtrip, D-T-R-I-P-P, -P, dot tag, T-A-G, at gmail.com. Okay. And just as we're, as we're heading out from this, I want you to just tell us about the networking group that you started <laughs> five years ago because you are making um, just amazing contacts through there. I know that I have. Oh. Uh, Thank you. Um, we started a group called Point Professionals back around 2016 to educate uh, and assist families of older adults with the aging process. Okay. And we started out with six people meeting for coffee once a week. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did some 
public speaking things and uh, tried to educate the public. And then COVID hit. Mm. And we couldn't go to the coffee shop anymore. And somebody created Zoom just for me, I'm sure of it. Uh, There's a whole <laughs> lot of people that are learning <laughs> Zoom. <laughs> but through the networking of the people that were there and inviting other people who have the same goal. And that goal is to assist older adults and their families navigate the aging journey. It's not something you can stop, but you can make it more efficient, less stressful, uh, more economical. And uh, we are up over 100 members now in, well, it'll be two years in March. Very and good. Uh, all of us, we cover Metro Detroit uh, from down river to St. Clair County and out as far as Howell. Okay. And it's our dream was to be the resource for people. So if you have a need, think about us, give us a call. Yeah. We can refer you to the person you need. And that's, that's one of the things that myself and some of the other people that have already been on the show here um, one of the things that we that I found is every time I get a phone call, it may not be for hospice or placement or home care or things of that nature. It may be for a nursing home, um, a, a you know someone to come in, a private duty aid. It could be life insurance. I get phone calls for so many different things, um, even funeral homes. And, and we have tried to get calls for this. And one of my goals has been to try and get as many unique professionals involved as possible mm -hmm. so that if mom or dad can't get out of the house to go somewhere, maybe the need they have can come to them. Absolutely. We have mobile pharmacy. We have mobile diagnostics. Yeah. We have, a, there's a, you know, mobile attorney services. Yeah, we have, uh, I, I know that we also have a durable medical equipment. That's right. There's um, there's some amazing partners that we have in that, and I have been so pleased. I wanted to thank you um, just for Starting Point Professionals and the and the impact that it's had on my life and, and the referral sources. I know that I can go to any one of those partners of mine and refer and know that they're going to be taken care of. That's the there's an integrity issue that's behind that. Integrity as well as ethical. Absolutely. And that's, I don't vet any of anybody or do background mm -hmm. checks, but I think we can tell as a group whether or not somebody's gonna be a, a good fit with this partnership. Absolutely. Well, we are running low on time, so I wanna thank you again for being our guest today. Dan, can you give your number just one more time, please? My number is 313-478-4337. Thank you so much. Call me. There you go. <laughs> you heard him. Call him. <laughs>